Hello, boys and girls. It's Mr. McMahon. And today I'd like to read a letter to my teacher. The words are by Deborah Hopkins, and the pictures are by Nancy Carpenter. A letter to my teacher, the title page. Dear teacher, whenever I had something to tell you, I tugged on your shirt and whispered in your ear. This time, I'm writing a letter. I hope you remember me. I was the one who marched to school that first day, splashing through every puddle I could find. I wore a bright yellow raincoat and a dark, stormy frown. Because for me, school meant sitting still and listening. Two things I wasn't much good at. I stood there, ornery and dripping, just sure I'd get in trouble. But instead, you grinned at me. Good morning. Look at you, standing there like Mary Kingsley, just back from canoeing up the Ogu River. Who? I said. Where? Mary Kingsley, the fearless explorer, you explained. Someday we'll read about her and crocodiles. Now get the mob. Crocodile. After taking attendance, you made a big announcement. Welcome. This year, we'll be planting the first ever second grade garden. It will be our great experiment. Yay! We get to dig in the mud, I shouted. True, but first we read about plants, you said. We'll use math to measure our plot, and we'll write out our garden plan. Reading? Math? Writing? I was better at running and jumping. The next week, we visited the creek behind the school to learn about plants and water. When you weren't watching, I started to hop the rocks. Right in the middle, I got stuck. Look at me! I'm Mary What's-Her-Name, I hollered, trying to sound brave. Watch out for crocodiles, you called back. Then you rushed to rescue me. On the way back, you held my hand and never told anyone how much I was shaking. All fall, I tried to sit still. Right before Thanksgiving vacation, you asked who wanted to take the Mouse Brothers home. Me, pick me, I shouted. But while I was busy eating turkey, my cat Lucy ate one brother. I bought a replacement mouse, except I just couldn't tell you. One day when we were cleaning their cage, you called me over to your desk and told me that we might have to change the brothers' names to Ma and Pa Mouse. You knew the whole time, I said. Laughing, you said, might as well get used to it. Teachers see everything. When winter came, the reading corner became our secret garden of stories. On Friday afternoons, we all curled up in a heap to listen, just like our new litter of mice. I loved it when you read to us, and I always begged for more. But I hated being called on to read out loud. I kept tripping over words. Once, right before my turn, I yelled, raise your hand if you want to go home. Another time, I clutched my throat and croaked, uh-oh, I lost my voice. Nothing fooled you, though. You called me to your desk and asked, when we make our garden, do you think the seeds will grow right away? No, I said. Everyone knows that they need time and sun and water. Well, learning to read takes time, too, you said. Now, I think you have a cat. I nodded. Lucy, the one who likes mice. I'd like you to read Lucy to Lucy every day, you suggested. It might keep you out of trouble. I giggled. Maybe I'll read her Puss in Boots. I 
I practiced hard, and you gave me extra help, too. One day you brought me a special book. I met a real author, and he autographed it just for you. You said. I looked at the cover and sounded out the words. Wow! It's about her, the explorer, Mary Kingsley. You smiled. Next week, you can share it with the class. In March, we explored our town. We went on a field trip to an old house. It was full of history and secret stairways. When I slipped away to look for hidden treasure in the root cellar, you and the whole class had to trudge down the old stone steps to find me. I think even you lost your patience that time. Exasperating was the word you used. I remember because that night my mom helped me look it up in the dictionary. The day you brought in seeds for us to choose, I tugged on your shirt. Can we plant this kind? The packet says early spring. We can have bright red radishes in just a few weeks. Good reading and great idea, you said. Thanks to the math games we played, measuring our garden patch was easy. At last, we turned over our soil and were ready to plant. I was radish crew chief and read out the instructions all by myself. All spring we weeded and watered and kept garden journals too. On the Friday before summer vacation, we wrote out invitations to every class to come enjoy the salad we'd grown ourselves. Splendid spinach, said the principal. It's because of the worms, I explained. I didn't know how to say thank you, so on the last day I gave you a present, a memory quilt. I measured squares on paper and made the story of our year in each one. The reading corner, worms in our compost, the magnificent mouse family, and best of all, a picture of you and me. You looked at the quilt a long time, then held it up for everyone to see. Thank you. Now I'll never forget you all and the year of the second grade garden. Me neither, I promised, and I never have. For a long time now, I've been wanting to write to tell you that even though I didn't always listen, and I know I was exasperating, second grade really was the best year ever. So I guess you won't be too surprised to hear that I still like to stomp through creeks, dig in the garden, and even read out loud to my cat. Most of all, I wanted to tell you that I'm about to start my first job. And tomorrow morning when I go to work, I'll think about everything you helped me explore and try my best to be like you. Thank you for being my teacher. You're a student. And that's a letter to my teacher. Thank you for listening, guys. See you next time.